in the project dissertation or phd thesis you will have to discuss the method which you used to do your research the research methodology chapter explains what did you do and how did you do so in this video we will discuss how to write the research methodology chapter for your project dissertation or a phd thesis Hey everyone welcome back once again by the end of this video you will know and understand how to write the research methodology chapter for your project dissertation work or a phd thesis make sure to watch the video till the end and if you're new to the channel then please do hit on the subscription and bell icon to get the notification of latest uploads and also if you have further queries feel free to comment them in the comment section we will divide this video into three important parts number one is going to be what to be included in the research methodology chapter number two we will discuss some important tips and number three we will talk about an example so let's get started with the video the first point you will have to include in your research methodology chapter is going to be a research gap you'll be wondering how to frame the research gap so don't worry i have already made one video based on literature review and the literature review gives you an idea how to write the research gap what should be the right resource gap or you will be wondering about an example don't worry watch the video till the end in the example section i have explained your resource gap in this series i have already made the video on how to write introduction chapter which is going to be first chapter how to write literature review chapter which is going to be the second chapter make sure to watch them as per your convenience i have left the link here in the description box or you can also click on the i button and check them as per your convenience if you're clear about the introduction chapter and literature review chapter you will be able to understand research methodology chapter well because some of the part like research gap which is going to get you from your literature review chapter the third point which you'll have to add in the research methodology chapter is going to be your objective without the objective your project is incomplete which is going to straight away going to get rejected by the examiner so make sure that you have added at least three to four objective in your project how to write the objective objective should be aligned with your topic like let's say for example in the topic if you have mentioned impact of social media on the performance of a brand so objective should be to study the social media to study the impact of social media on brand performance likewise you should link your objective with your topic point number 4 you'll have to add is hypothesis which is going to an optional if you're writing your internship report or maybe uh, a ug report then it's not compulsory to add the hypothesis but if you're adding with the help of your teacher that is going to be you know added benefit but if you're writing phd thesis then it is compulsory to have 3 to 4 hypothesis in your phd thesis next point which you'll have to add in this chapter is data collection how did you collect the primary data how did you collect the secondary data what was the source of a primary data what was the source of a secondary data also you'll have to mention in your research methodology chapter like let's say for example if you are specifically talking about the primary data primary data is a first hand information which you as a researcher going to collect maybe with the help of survey questionnaire observation there are various methods you can read that in detail and if you're talking about the secondary data secondary data is already been published by other people or maybe companies you can get the secondary data maybe from different website journals magazines and most importantly research papers but the source of the data like primary and secondary has to be mentioned here in this chapter if it is project or dissertation uh, it's not mandatory but for the phd thesis it's compulsory to collect the primary data because secondary data uh, is not sufficient to complete your thesis there may be some exceptions so uh, the method of data collection you will have to uh, mention so method of data collection it can be with the help of questionnaire with the help of uh, maybe observations interviews there are various methods of data collection that also you'll have to mention under the research methodology chapter next point you'll have to mention is a sample size uh, like let's say for example if i want to know impact of use of social media on youth in pune so it is not possible for me to reach out to each and every youth in pune first of all i'll have to define who uh, are the youth or what is the definition of youth and accordingly i have to collect the sample a uh, sample can be around 300 400 there are various tools nowadays available to calculate the sample so sample size also have to be uh, mentioned in the research methodology chapter when you are talking about the sample size you'll also have to mention about the sampling method 
whether it was a probability sampling or non probability sampling so sampling method also will have to mention under the resource methodology chapter the next point is going to be the universe so what was the universe or area of research from where you have collected your uh, samples or the responses that also will have to mention and the last point is data analysis tool if it is project or a dissertation then you can use simple tables and graphs with the help of excel in fact the questionnaire google itself gives you you know uh, pre formed graphs but if it is a phd thesis then you will have to use a uh, different tool especially people use in humanity uh, spss for the data analysis so you'll also have to mention which kind of tool and which kind of a uh, method you have used for the analysis of the data and the last point also you'll have to remember when it comes to an analysis which kind of test you have applied it is specially uh, applicable to the phd thesis whether it was a chi square test whether it was t test z test and why those tests you have used for the analysis of the data also you'll have to mention but if you're writing the report based on your internship or maybe a general internship report then don't worry you don't have to mention any sort of uh, this test but if you're doing it with the help of your teacher it will give you an added benefit so these were some important points which you'll have to remember and add in your research methodology chapter let us move to the second part of the video which is based on some tips you will have to remember these three important points while writing this chapter number one the research methodology chapter has to be written in the past tense uh, like let's say for example the research method which was used by the researcher is this this or the data collection tool which was used so you'll have to write uh, this chapter especially in the past tense the second point which you'll have to remember is instead of i you'll have to use researcher like let's say for example the research design or the research methodology which was used by the researcher so instead of saying which was used by me or i had used mention it saying researcher so this work has been given this work has been done by the researcher and the third important point you'll have to remember is interdependency or linking your uh, work because in many cases lot of student commit the same mistake they don't connect their topic with objective then a finding and then conclusion so you need to uh, maintain that link on the basis of your title you will have to define your or you'll have to frame your objective on the basis of objective you'll have to make your questionnaire and then data analysis and findings so everything has to be interlinked so try to follow that connecting link in your project so these were some important tips you'll have to remember while writing research methodology chapter let us move to the third part which is going to be the last part of this video that is going to be an example so let us have a look at the research methodology chapter with this example so here is an example if you look at this this is chapter number three research methodology first of all what you'll have to write in your research methodology is a research gap so research gap is the reason behind choosing this particular topic uh, research gap you will get from the literature review so any topic which you select you'll have to find the literature review for it and you'll have to check what area of a topic which you have selected is not taken by the researcher to do a research that can be a research gap here the research gap is mentioned for impact of marketing mix or promotional mix strategies for the pharmaceutical companies and what can be an ideal research gap is mentioned here you can pause the video and uh, read out how the research gap has been framed the second important point in the research methodology has to be the objective so uh, objective minimum three and maximum five will do uh, here objective is linked with your topic like let's say for example if the topic is uh, a study of customer satisfaction towards xyz stuff so here the objective will start with to study the customer satisfaction so here there has to have the link between the topic you have selected and your objective next one after the objective is going to be hypothesis if you're writing a phd thesis then you can mention the hypothesis or uh, if you're writing uh, a report on internship or maybe a dissertation so if you don't mention the hypothesis that's also fine uh, but just to get an idea what is a hypothesis so hypothesis is an assumption and you'll also have to mention null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis so null hypothesis is generally 
uh, a negative or not uh, significantly related be mentioned in the null hypothesis so if you read at this the buying intention of over the counter drugs and promotional mix element are not significantly related right so if they are related is going to be your alternative hypothesis so if you are saying that they are correlated or significantly correlated then your hypothesis gets accepted otherwise the hypothesis gets rejected you can also read uh, in detail about how to what is a hypothesis and how to write the hypothesis after the hypothesis what you'll have to have is a source of a primary data so in this research the primary data was collected with the help of the structured questionnaire so if you are collecting the data with the help of uh, by taking interview survey you can also mention how you collected the primary data uh, the secondary data also or uh, here it is mentioned how the secondary data was collected with the help of uh, the journals magazines newspapers and the tool for data collection was uh, or the instrument for data collection was the questionnaire and how many questions were there uh, in each of those scales it is mentioned here so in this particular questionnaire all together there were six sub scales so what is sub scale and stuff we will be seeing them here in the one of the video uh, in how to form a questionnaire for a report or how to make the questionnaire for collecting the primary data in that we will see that see how what is what is scale and sub scale and stuff uh, so here i have also mentioned for some other uh, data collection uh, instruments and stuff so here method of uh, data collection you will have to mention so that method we used for the data collection was a structured questionnaire secondary data again secondary data was collected from research papers offline newspapers and theses and articles and stuff sampling size also you'll have to mention sample is like let's say for example if you want to know the customer satisfaction of uh, xyz product or xyz company then it's not practically possible to reach out to everyone here you can collect the sample and know the behavior which represents the entire universe you'll also have to mention the sampling method so here the non probability convenient sampling was used data analysis tool if it's a phd thesis i think in one of my video i had mentioned that you'll have to use spss and you'll also have to apply some test but for ug or pg a dissertation report or maybe internship report it's not required because you generally do the analysis using excel and graphs and chart so here we have come to an end of an example to summarize we have seen some important points to be included in the research methodology chapter some important tips and example i'm sure you must have found them useful and informative if so then please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe the channel and hit on the bell icon to get the notification of latest uploads comment and let me know which all are the other points which a researcher or a student can include in the research methodology chapter or what should be a part of research methodology chapter the next video is going to be on how to write data analysis and interpretation some people do call it as data analysis and discussion chapter so i'll see you guys in the next video until then this is sandeep signing off thank you for your time <laughs>